I have been actually overwhelmed by it because we have had 44 people sign up for the 555 Club. Give the Lord praise for that. And it's been a great, great blessing to the folks, and we encourage you, if you're not yet a part of that, you can still be a part of it. Uh, let me know, and we'll make sure we get you in there. This morning, I want to preach a message to you on this Mother's Day that is entitled, Moms Scare the Devil Real Bad. Moms Scare the Devil Real Bad. All the moms say amen. amen. All the dads say amen. Every man understands a universal truth. That universal truth is that we would be nothing without the women in our lives. Everybody shout amen on that one. It's like God created Adam, and then he stepped back, he looked, and he said, that's real close. That's real close. But there's something missing. There's something not there. And he stepped back and he said, I know, woman. Woman is what I need. And God used the woman to bring together creation. He used the woman to finish it, to complete it, to put that last stroke, a master stroke on a masterpiece, that finishing touch on creation, to put the finishing touch on the family. Moms bring it all together. And moms scare the devil really bad, because they have a power and an ability that no man has. They have the ability to bring another human life into this world. And we rejoice in that. We honor them for that. We honor God as He has created this creation and created woman to fulfill that place. They can produce a human life and that human life has the ability to fight darkness in this world. And that's why moms scare Satan real bad. God said to Satan in the garden after Adam and Eve had sinned, He said to Satan that it was through childbirth, it was through motherhood, it was through the woman that his head was going to be crushed. Now this was specifically talking about the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Listen to what Genesis 3.15 says. God says, I will put enmity, I will put hostility between you and the woman, he says to Satan, and between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. God promises this word out into the atmosphere, out into eternity, that the way that He is going to defeat Satan is through the woman. The way He is going to defeat Satan is Messiah would come through the woman. God says to Satan, there is one coming for you. He's gunning for you. You don't know when He's going to come on the scene, but He is coming and he's going to be after you. And it's going to come through woman. He will come after you through motherhood. And Jesus was born of a woman. And through the cross and his resurrection, he did crush the head of Satan. Everybody say amen. amen. Just as God promised in Genesis 3, Jesus came after Satan via being born of the woman. Now Satan knew Messiah was coming through the woman way back. He knew when he began to watch through the years for who this might be. He knew Messiah was coming. He knew that if he could possibly hit him off at the pass, if he could trip him up, if he could kill him, if he could stop this birth, stop this child from coming into the world through motherhood, that maybe he could defend himself. Maybe he could keep himself from being hurt. He was hoping that he could kill it before it did him damage. And Satan heard the promise of God to Abraham. He heard the Abrahamic covenant. And Satan began to wonder about this as God says to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation 
and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Now we understand this, Abraham had no children. And so this is all going to happen through motherhood. This is all going to happen through birth. And I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. And Satan's ears popped up and said, oh, this is it. This is it. God is talking about that one who is going to come through a woman who is going to crush my head. Who is it, though? He didn't know who it would be. And when Isaac was born, Satan thought, is it him? And when Jacob was born, Satan thought, is it him? And then you go farther down in the biblical historical timeline and we see the story of the Hebrews in slavery in Egypt and they were crying out to God to be delivered. And God said, I will send a deliverer to them. And Satan got nervous. He got nervous. He knew something was going to happen. He says, I just know God is going to do something here. And could it be that this is where that one that he said was going to come through woman would come and crush my head? Could this be the one that God is sending? And so Satan gets nervous, and so he inspires Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to get nervous. He inspires Pharaoh to be nervous about the numbers of the Hebrews, and says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that all of the male children that are born are going to die. And he did that because he was afraid of the numbers of the Hebrews, and maybe one day they would overcome the Egyptians. But that was just, that was just inspired by the devil, because the real fear behind this was Satan wondered if this could be the one that God's talked about in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15. And so Exodus 1, 15 says, The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Zipporah and Puah, When you help the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. And we know the story that they refused to do that And Moses came into the world. God brought this man, Moses, into the world to raise him up and to be a deliverer of those that were in slavery there in Egypt. But this was not the one. And Satan kept watching for the one God had promised would come through woman. And then one day he heard the prophet Nathan talking to King David. And this is what he heard. Nathan says to David, when your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. And he is the one who will build the house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever talking about the line that would come through David, Solomon, and then on, and then finally leading to the one that God was talking about in Genesis chapter 3, 15, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as Satan heard Nathan the prophet speaking to King David, he said, ah, now I know this is coming through the line of David. And he watched for this one to come. And then in the fullness of time, the angel visits Mary. And she was the one that was specifically spoken of in Genesis chapter 3, 15, where she would be the woman that the one would come through. The Messiah would come through. She would be used by God to bring this incredible birth that would happen, this motherhood that would happen, that would produce the one who would crush the head of Satan. And as Jesus came into the world through the woman, Satan began to lay a trap. He began to speak and whisper to King Herod, who was one messed up dude, And he began to whisper to him about, this one is going to take your throne and you need to defend your throne. And so Herod sent people out searching for this Jesus because he was afraid that 
this Jesus would grow up and take his throne. But the real fear behind this was Satan's fear that this one is the one and he would be the one that would grow up and crush the head of Satan. Herod searched but couldn't find him. And so Satan inspired Herod to give an order to kill all of the male children born between certain dates in an attempt to kill the one who came through the woman. Again, Herod trying to protect his throne, but in reality, Satan very afraid that he would lose his throne. It's interesting that when we look at the story in Egypt and we look at the story in Bethlehem, we see that both of them contains this element of the killing of children. Both of them have human reasoning and also demonic reasoning. And the same is true in the day of the age that we live in. There's a human reasoning when we think about abortion. The human reasoning is women have a right to take the life of their baby because it's their body, their body, their choice. But the satanic and the demonic reasoning behind that is this, that Satan is still scared of what is coming through the woman. Messiah Jesus has already come but Satan knows that more Jesus followers are coming. Everybody say amen. amen. An army of warriors are ready to be born. An army of warriors have already been born. And Satan is very scared, afraid of what can happen through childbirth, through motherhood. God has ordained men and women of God for His kingdom. And He brings them into this world to resist and stand against and fight against the darkness of the evil one. I get this picture in my mind when I think about this. It's a picture of an old World War II movie. You've seen these scenes where the paratroopers jump out of the planes and the skies are filled with with parachutes, and, and the enemy's on the ground just bam, 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 trying to shoot these soldiers in the air. Because they know that once they land, and once they get out of those chutes, they now have become dangerous warriors that can inflict great damage upon them. And I see that very same picture played out right here in the area of abortion, just like it was in Egypt, just like it was in Bethlehem. It's the fear of Satan that if they can get into this world, if they can get on the ground, if the soldiers can get moving on the ground, they become very dangerous. And so the essence, the foundation, the reasoning behind abortion is to stop the potential of the womb, to stop men and women of God from being born and being raised up into an army of God to move against darkness and to move against the evil one. When you look at the numbers of abortions, it begins to make sense on this because it doesn't make sense in any other way. It doesn't make sense in any other way that a people could embrace the idea of taking the lives of their own children. It goes against everything that is in the heart of a mom. It goes, even in our fallen nature, even in our sinfulness, to the vast majority of people, we would be, we would be just disgusted by this idea. We would, we would take this as being awful. We would never want to embrace these things. And yet millions do embrace these things. And so when we look at the numbers and we see that since Roe versus Wade became law in 1973, we see over 60 million abortions have taken place in America. The CDC says the leading cause of death in America is heart disease with over 600,000. And that's not true. That's a lie. The leading cause of disease or, or death is abortion. It's abortion. The leading cause of death in America is abortion. 
in the world, some have the percentage at 40% are being aborted in the world and around the world. Now Roe versus Wade has the possibility of coming to the end, but we see some of the states beginning to scream about this and not like it and stand up against it, and there's protests that are happening in the street. As a matter of fact, there was reports, I heard it this morning, that there was a call for protesters to go to all the churches, and I see we have no protesters here, that's good. They knew it wouldn't do any good here. So I, I ask the question, I stop and I think about this. And I put all this together in my mind, and we have to do this as believers. We have this history in the scripture. We have this history where Satan has tried to stop motherhood. He's tried to stop the birth of children. He's tried to stop Messiah from coming into the world. And we also know this, that there's an army of people being born and, having, and has been born in the world, rising up against the kingdom of darkness, and Satan is trying to stop all those things due to abortion, using abortion. So we ask the question, why do some people think the killing of your child should be a fundamental right? Why should it be a fundamental right? And the only thing I can say is that their eyes are blinded by the evil one. Their hearts have been captured by darkness. And the politicians that gleefully talk about abortion as being our right are agents of Satan. And you say, Rich, this is Mother's Day. You're supposed to be nice. And this is, you know, you, you, sound, you sound like this is just, you know, extreme. It's not extreme for the church to stand up and say what is right and what is wrong. We do it with gentleness, we do it with kindness, we don't hate anybody, but we're going to be faithful to God, we're going to be faithful to His Word, and we are going to stand up for those little children that are not yet born that somebody is contemplating taking their life. We're going to stand up and say what is right, because sometimes all it takes is somebody saying, wait a minute, that's wrong. And it influences the heart of somebody that was getting, the go, was getting ready to go the wrong direction. I've told you the story before about Jennifer and I working at the Family Children's Center. And there was a, a young girl there that was under our care. And she had gone home on a home visit and she had gotten pregnant. And now the facility was talking about her getting an abortion. And they said to us, you better not talk to her about this. This is not your job. You should not do this. And so we said, okay, we won't talk to her. We went down to Right to Life and we got a bunch of pamphlets and we laid them out on the cupboard right next to the bathroom. And she picked them up and saw them one day and read them. She came out of the bathroom and she was just freaking out. She says, I'm not going to get an abortion. And she didn't get an abortion. She, she brought that child to term. And so sometimes just some little encouragement, a word, somebody standing up and saying, no, that's not right, makes a big difference that it could save a life. And so here this morning, yes, I've said some rough things, I've said some extreme things, but oh my goodness, in the church, we've got to say the truth. And so when I think about these things, the only thing I can think as I look at the Word of God, as I look at how Satan has operated in the past, as I see the fear that he has had of the birth of Jesus Christ, and the fear that he has that many more of us are going to come as warriors for God, it only makes sense that the reason people embrace the killing of children as a fundamental right is because it's Satan-inspired. Abortion is not about a woman's right to choose. Abortion is about stopping the potential of the womb. Abortion is Satan's fear of what is going to be able to come against him if it's allowed to be born. So he fights women, he fights motherhood, he fights birth because he's afraid. Church, I want to give you three reasons that moms scare Satan real bad. The first one we've talked about, moms can create a person with potential to destroy darkness. 
Messiah Jesus came and crushed the head of Satan on the cross, as predicted in Genesis 3.15. God did it through motherhood. God did it through birth. But today, moms are still creating warriors following Jesus. When I think about this concept, I look back in history and I think, boy, A.W. Tozer's mom never could have imagined what that birth, that motherhood, was going to do for the world. John Wesley's mom could have never imagined that her boys would go on to change nations and that through her becoming a mom, through those births, people, millions of people would be led into the kingdom of God. And some of you in this room right here, some of you are reaching into heaven every day, praying and changing things in this world. And we thank you for that, but we thank your mom for that. Amen? Because you wouldn't be here to do it unless it was for her. Some of you are serving and teaching and giving and loving, and we owe your moms big time for that. Over the last 13 years, we have, Jennifer and I often talk about this, we have memories of some of your children now that are sitting in the sanctuary right now, pretty much grown. We have memories of them being little kids running down the hallway looking for candy, you know? And now we see them growing up, becoming young men and young women. And it's because of you, Mom. It's because of your speaking into their life. It's because of your example. It's because of you bringing them into the world. And who knows what they're going to do for the kingdom of God? Who knows what blow they're going to strike against the kingdom of darkness? They are filled with incredible potential to do great good in this world. And we thank you. For that, we thank you for the difference that your children are going to make in this world. The second reason that moms scare the devil real bad, the second reason is, is because moms have the power of a whisper. For nine months, that child lives under the sound of mom's beating heart. The first voice they hear is the voice of their mama. Then after they're born, mom rocks that child in the middle of the night and whispers into that child's ear, I love you. I'll always love you. No matter what. She whispers into that child's ear, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. She whispers into that child's ear, no weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. She whispers into that child's ear, God says He'll give you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means will hurt you. And no matter how old those children get, Mom, When they hear your voice, their heart lights up. They might try to hide it because they're cool, but their heart lights up on the inside. And Satan hates that. He hates that you have that, that whisper that has been there from the beginning and that that child always, always, always will respond to that voice. Satan tries to separate them from that whisper, from that voice of mom, but he can't do it. So moms, no matter how old they get, you keep telling them, Jesus loves you, this I know. You keep telling them, I love you, I'll always love you, no matter what. You keep telling them those things, you keep whispering those things, and God will use your voice in their heart to bring them back if they stray. The third reason that moms scare Satan real bad is because moms don't give up. Everybody say amen. Amen. Moms have a we're going to get it done sort of atmosphere, don't they? Moms are designed, 
<clears throat> to make things work. When a dad comes to the kitchen and opens up the refrigerator and says, what's for dinner? And he says, oh, there's nothing in the fridge. Let's get pizza. Mom comes and says, now wait a minute. She opens up the refrigerator. She says, here's a bag of green beans, some gravy, and something that's light brown. We're going to put this together and make it work. And dads, if you're smart, you'll say, man, that looks good. Thank you, honey. Moms make things work. And many times, I'll tell you what, many times, I have seen that the fierceness of a mom's heart is more than the fierceness of a dad's heart sometimes. I've seen that the fierceness of a, of a mama bear's heart is something to behold. Many times, and I'll tell you, every pastor will tell you this, every pastor now, this is no slam on you guys. You guys have, have uh, different attributes and different things that you're good at, but I'm going to tell you something. So many times, and, and again, every pastor will tell you this, it's the ladies that seek God. It's the ladies that have the heart that reach out to God, that call out to God. It's the ladies that are fierce in prayer. They become incredible prayer warriors. They have a I will never give up, I will never let go sort of attitude. Sometimes men will say, well, we've prayed about this and, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen, so I guess this is just the way it's going to be. And a woman says, no, we just haven't asked long enough. God wants to know if we're serious. You see, moms don't let go. They keep on asking until they get a yes from God. And that's a powerful, powerful thing. And Satan hates that. Satan fears that. He fears a mom who will not let go. And so this morning, we thank God for the lives of all of our moms and what they have meant to us. Those who never gave up and never let go in prayer. All those who have whispered into those little ears words of victory and words of of strength. All those moms who have pointed those little ones to Jesus. All those moms who have fed us and loved us and cared for us and combed our hair and made sure our clothes are clean and who put a band-aid on our knee when we fell down. We're thankful for all they've done for us. And so we, we also pray for moms who are considering abortions. That they would know that there's an incredible treasure that God has placed within them. We also pray for all those who have had abortions. That they would know that there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. We stand here this morning and without apology proclaim that abortion is wrong. But just as strongly we proclaim that God forgives. Amen. And anyone who will come to Him and just lay their heart out before God and say, God, I'm sorry for whatever the sin is, we have the promise of God in His Word that His forgiveness will be there through Jesus Christ. And so we pray for those that are considering abortion. We pray for those that have had abortion. And we rejoice in all of our children and anticipate how God will use them in the coming days. And this morning we recognize the value and the power and the far-reaching influence of all of our moms. And we just want to say thank you so much for all you've done for us, for all you've done for this world, and for raising up children that are going to make a difference in this world. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise for our moms. Glory to your name, Lord. Before we go out of here this morning, we want to pray together. And so I'm going to ask you all to stand, please. <clears throat> As we often do at Christ Community Church, we just open up the room 
for as many as want to, want to, to lead out in prayer. Somebody will start and somebody else will follow and we'll let the folks pray about these things. Let me encourage you in your prayer in these areas. Pray for our moms. Pray for our kids that are growing up in this time. It's a very difficult time. Pray for those women that are considering abortion. And pray for those women that have had abortions. And also pray that truly Roe versus Wade will no longer be the law of the land. Amen. So let's start this morning. Somebody start us out and others follow in prayer.